All right. Now, up to this point, we've talked about a lot of different functions. We've uh, we've uh, looked at all the different basic functions. Now, today, we are going to learn about a special class of function called a piecewise function. Fresh black marker. Our objective today is that students will be able. to graph piecewise defined functions. All right, let's get to it. So, now, you've probably seen piecewise functions in previous classes. What is a piecewise function exactly? Well, let's, before we talk about piecewise functions specifically, let's talk about functions in general. Call that functions are like little mathematical machines. The input. is plugged into a rule to get an output x gets plugged into a rule, and an output comes out. Input, rule, output. Now, Sometimes you can have a function where different numbers use different rules. It is all still the same function, but different sections of the function are defined differently.
So there are some functions where the rule changes depending on what number is plugged in. So for example, you have an x. And some numbers, we'll call this set A, will go into one rule. And some numbers, we'll call it set B, will go into this rule. We'll call this rule A, and we'll call this rule B. Before they give us our output. Now this is still one function. Each input, um, uh, each input has only has one and only one output. You know, the main definition of a function is that for every input, there's only one output. So it still has to pass the vertical line test and all that. But when x is a certain set of numbers, it'll use one rule, and when x is a different set of numbers, it'll use a different rule. Now, These are called. See, do I have enough room to squeeze it in? I might. These are called. Piecewise. defined functions. Now, piece so what's in a name here? Piecewise defined functions. Well, piecewise means that it's broken up into pieces or that, or rather piecewise is an adjective I believe it's an adjective. Uh, it's an adjective describing that different pieces work in different ways. So the defined is saying that each piece has its own definition, which we're also calling a rule. And it's a function because it's a function. These are also often just called piecewise functions. So piecewise function and piecewise defined functions, they're the same thing, just two different ways of referring to them. So let's try working with a piecewise function for a minute. All right. Now, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Anybody? Any yelling? All right. I can bring it back if you need it. Just give me a sign. Actually, no, it will work here. <clears throat> hmm. So we're going to start just by diving right in.
we're going to fill out the table. And sketch the graph of f of x. So f of x is going to be a piecewise function or a piecewise defined function. Now, piecewise functions are typically defined, you'll, you'll can identify them by these big brackety things. This is telling us that this whole thing is part of one function, f of x. Uh, hmm, sorry. Okay, so anyway, so here are the rules. Some sections of the function will be defined as f of x equals x. Other section of the function will be defined as f of x equals x squared. Now, now for, we also need to list the sections of the domain that use these different rules. So in the first section, X will be going from negative, oops. Neg ah, man, my fingers are flubbing it today. There we go. All right. So here is how our function is defined. So when x, when the negative 5 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or is less than 0, then we will use this rule, x. Oh, wait, I want this to, no, no, we'll. We'll do it like this. Now, when x squared, when we'll be using the rule x squared, when x is greater than 0. All right, make sense? So I'm going to so I'm going to make a table. All right, this section of the table will have our x's, this section of our table will have our f of x's. Okay, say negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, Let's say one, two, okay. All right. So when so when X is negative five which of these tables is used? 
or which of these rules is used, the top rule or the bottom rule? Well, negative 5 is less than or equal to x, and it is less than 0. Or, so x, so negative 5 is less than or equal to our x value, so we're going to use the top rule. Plug that into there, and negative 5 will give us, well, negative 5. No biggie. What about negative 4? Well, negative 5 is less than negative 4, and it is less than 0. So this top rule applies. Plug that in, negative 4 plugged into that. Well, there's nothing, it's not doing anything to our input, so it's just left alone, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 2, negative, negative 5 is still less than negative 2 which is still less than zero, so this condition still holds. Negative one, negative five is less than negative one, which is less than zero, so this rule holds. All right, now what about zero? Now negative five is less than zero, but zero is not less than zero. If this was less than or, or equal to zero, then we would use this rule but it's not, we're using a regular less than symbol. Zero is not less than zero. So will we use this rule? Well, no, because zero is not greater than zero either. Neither of these rules applies. Does that make sense? Zero is not part of either one of these intervals. It's not part of either one of these sets. Okay, does that make sense? Is anyone confused? Now, since zero is not part of either one, it's, since neither of these rules is going to be used, there's no rule for us to eat that we can plug this into. So zero will stay undefined. There's no output associated with zero. All right, now let's plug in one. Which rule will, does one use? Well, negative five is less than is less than one, but one is not less than zero, so we won't be using this rule. But one is greater than zero, so we'll be using this rule. One squared is one. All right, and now what about two? Two is greater than zero, so we'll use this rule. Two squared is four. And now we can make a sketch of our function. Now, to be clear, we also didn't necessarily need to do the table, but I wanted to make sure that you understood. I figured the ta table would be a useful tool for helping us understand how all this works. All right, so we have the point. So let's graph these points. First is the point negative 5, negative 5. Negative 4, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 1 but we don't have any point for zero. There's no point to draw at zero on the x-axis. Now to the right, we have a point at negative, at one, one, and a point at two, four. Now, f, y equals x is actually one of our basic functions. It's a straight line. So it will follow a straight line up until it hits zero. Zero itself is not allowed to be plugged in. So our function is nicely well defined, but at zero, we have a missing point. Now from here, the rest of this, this is the squaring function, x squared, which draws a parabola. Now note that this function is defined for that it uses this rule for all numbers greater than zero. So the graph does in fact keep going. Whee!
keeps on going forever. So a straight line up to there, and then a parabola up to there for the rest. So note that for this section, from negative 5 to 0, it's using the first rule. From 0 all the way out to infinity, it's using this rule. Make sense? All right. So now I'm going to give you, oh, oh. Now note that this section here, there is no, there's zero doesn't fit into either one of these rules, so it is left undefined. So there's a gap there. This point is not is not being used. Hence why I left a little circle there to show that there is a gap at x equals zero. This is called a discontinuity. All right. Does anybody have any questions about about uh, how this happened? So someone asked, is zero a part of the drawing? Uh, no. So the graph is going graph, 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 graph. But, you know, remember that we make the graph by plugging. Yes, exactly. It's undefined. So we make the graph by plugging in x values and getting out y values. That's how you graph points. When I connect the dots like this, that's just me like, it's essentially shorthand. It's not practical for me to plug in every single point in between each of these gaps here. So that's why we draw a line, draw a line. But at x equals 0, it doesn't fit into either one of these rules. 0 is not less than z is not 0 is not less than 0, nor is 0 greater than 0. So it's left blank. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that at, at this place, that doesn't necessarily mean that the places where the rules join is always going to have a discontinuity. They can be continuous. But that was just happening in this particular problem. Now, before we, we move on and give you one to try yourself, let's go ahead and graph this with Desmos. All right. Share screens. Desmos. All right. So Desmos is actually smart enough. It's OK. Desmos doesn't exactly draw piecewise functions, but I can just make two like sections of functions and give conditions to it. And we can see what the overall graph would look like. So let's say y equals x. That's our first rule. But this rule is only true when negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 0. 
uh, is that right? There we go. So we should have a short section of line like this. Now, we also have a definition that goes y equals x squared, but this section, I bet I'm going to make it in blue so that both colors match, but this only applies from 0 or when x is greater than 0. And there we go. And that's what we drew on, pa on the paper. Now, Desmos can't can't actually show the gap, but there is a gap there. There is no point associated with x equals 0. Desmos wants to draw a point there, but that's because Desmos is crazy. That's grapher failure. That happens sometimes. All right, and so that is our piecewise function, and that is what we drew on the paper. All right, now I'm going to give you one like this for you to try yourself. Well, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? All right, now it's your turn. All right. Fill out the table. And sketch the graph. of f of x. So my phone buzzing. Eh, who cares? You know what, I'm going to make our lives easier and make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Here's our x, here's our f of x. Let's see. We're going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3.
All right. Fill out, this, fill out the table and sketch the graph for me. I'll give you about mm, two minutes. All right. So, when I when x is negative two, what rule will I use? Will I use the top rule or the bottom rule? The top. Yes. Negative two is equal, or here, our x is negative 2, so if I plug, kind of plug that in there, negative 2 is indeed less than or equal to negative 2. They're equal. So I'll plug this rule in. So I'll plug ne uh, negative 2 into this rule. What is negative 2 times negative 2? What is negative 2 times negative 2? Uh, positive four. Exactly. All right. When x is negative one, what rule will I use, top or bottom? Top. Top. Negative two times negative one, that's a positive two. I'm going to try and go a little bit speedy here so we have time for at least one more example. When x is 0, 0 is in between negative 2 and 1. Uh, if I plug 0 in here, negative 2 would be less than or equal to 0, which is less than or equal to 1. So we'll use the top rule. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, yada, yada. Now, what about when x is 1? Well. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 1, which is indeed less than or equal to 1. So we'll use the top rule one last time. Negative 2 times 1 is 1. Now, what about when x is 2? What rule will I use? Someone tell me, what rule do I use when x equals 2? 
the top or the bottom? The bottom, because one is less than two, which is less than or equal to three. So I'm going to plug two into this guy. Two minus three. Oh, oops, I made a mistake here. Negative two times one is negative two. There we go. OK, anyway, two minus three. Two minus three is a negative one. And three, bottom rule again. One, one is less than three, and three is less than or equal to three. That or equal to is what's important there. That gives us uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. All right, now let's go ahead and sketch this thing. Negative 2, 4. There's the first point. Negative 1, 2. There's the second point. 0, 0. And 1, negative 2. Now we have 2, negative 1, and 3, 0. And there's our piecewise function. Now note that these intervals here do have a beginning and an end. This, these ones don't go off just forever in either direction. But there we have it. There's our piecewise function. Make sense? All right, and if we sketch it with Desmos, just to check our work, so our first rule is negative 2x, and it's going from negative 2, and it, this rule is used when negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one, our other rule is x minus 3, and it is used when 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 3. Fair enough? So it looks like we graphed it correctly. Now, something that I would like to mention is that the piecewise functions that we've drawn so far have been nicely joined up, while well, our last one did have a discontinuity at the corner there. This one does not. There's no gap on this one. It does have a corner, but it doesn't have that gap that our last one had, because none of these points are undefined. Now. There's absolutely no reason why piecewise functions have to be joined up, though. Like, if I had you graph x minus 2 there instead, then our function would have had this jump. And that's OK. That happens. That is allowed. All right. Now, one last thing. 
uh, here we did the, did it with the help of a table, but that table was really mostly useful just as a guide to help us sketch it. If we remember the shapes, if we can remember the shapes of uh, the function, then there's no particular reason why the tables need be required. Let's see, let's try one more. Will anyone yell at me if I erase stuff? Okay, I'm just going to erase this. All right. So let's do one where we don't bother with the table, and we'll just make a sketch based on what we know about the shape of the functions. Eh. Sketch the function f of x. All right. Let's say that in the interval uh, where x is less than 0, it will use this rule. And let's say that it uses the rule square root of x when x is greater than 0. What's this going to look like? Well, from what we remember about the basic functions, remember the 12 basic functions from a few lessons back? x squared that is the squaring function. That's uh, this guy. So to the left of the x-axis, or the, of the, to the left of the y-axis, it has this curve shape, the parabola. Ugh. So to the left, it looks something like this, like this. Oh, wait a minute. Let me make that an or equal to. That way we won't, don't have any ugly discontinuities. Now, when x is, is greater than or equal to 0, we'll instead use the square root function, which from our 12 basic functions looks something like that. So it's going to go up, out, and across. There we go. Note that for this one, this will use the top rule for any number smaller than 0. So negative 25, negative 37 billion, negative 1 and a half, we'll use the top rule. We'll use the bottom rule for any number greater than 0, like say 5, or 10, or 15, or uh, 
25 is somewhere out here or 75 million which is probably a couple miles that way and there we go the point is is that the tables are a guide but they're not strictly necessary if you have a good good foundation in what the basic functions look like all right anyway with that i'm gonna go ahead and uh I think we can go ahead and end our lesson there a few minutes early. So there will be a check for understanding on this. Now, like I said, this is the end of chapter one. So tomorrow we're going to have our chapter test. I still ha I'm gonna get it written up tonight and uh, tomorrow you'll have a chance to get any last minute questions about chapter one and then I'm gonna give you your chapter one test. Sound like a plan? All right, so today we learned about piecewise functions, which are functions that use different rules depending on what numbers you plug into it. Piecewise functions, now, oh, and one last thing I'll mention is that here we our piecewise functions are defined with two pieces, but there's no reason why we couldn't have them defined in in more pieces. It's just that each function, the different sections will never overlap. You see how zero plugging in zero is only using the bottom rule, not the top rule. If it didn't do that, then different inputs would give you more than one outputs, and that wouldn't be a function anymore to be a bad scene. But there's no reason why a piecewise function couldn't use more than two. All right, anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.